so um i am in windsor at the moment and there is a folk tale in windsor about hearn the woodsman and hearn apparently he rides a horse and he is very very scary and of course this is pertinent to halloween which it was yesterday and he has antlers growing from his head but there is something scarier than hearn the woodsman and that's hearn the uus so in the past, I've talked about Riptide. It's uh, a small unmanned water vehicle, uh, underwater vehicle. It's you know really hugely potent, even with its small size. It's, it's hugely configurable. Uh, and so the question is, how does one improve on that concept? How does one make it perhaps more apt for larger, uh, longer term, more uh, power necessitating military missions? And basically, the way we do this is we broaden its mission environment. How do we take this UUS concept and promote something that isn't just a munition? It's a vehicle, it's more configurable, it's more versatile, it's better in ISR value. Well, it's simple, really, and I don't think you really have to read into this too much. You make it bigger and better, and Hearn, the UUS, does that. It is, for lack of better descriptors, really, it's an ultra-chunky, uh, hyper-configurable, super-compatible UUS. Now, the chunkiness, it sounds rather uh, silly, rather childish, rather puerile, but it's incredibly important because while it sounds odd, to call it that, number one, the uh, vehicle literally begins with the label XL for extra large, and with this larger vehicle come a lot of bonuses, a lot of perks. And basically what that is, is there are more component parts, and more component parts means two things. More powerful technology, and more configurability. And in both of these facets, Hearn delivers. And I don't know whether I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I'm going to continue to pronounce it that way. So all in all, it tries to deliver, and I think does, a superior payload integration. Uh, sensor packages, mission planning, electronic architecture, and actually a lot more mothership integration to deliver what is pretty agile for its size uh, and an adaptive extra-large UUS solution. And basically what that means is that it has a plethora of mission-capable uh, modes and basically loads of mission capabilities, which makes it more versatile, which makes it more usable, uh, and higher value, and that's a very good thing. Uh, and so what I mean by this is that it's versatility that I do constantly drone on about and do excuse the pun, uh, is a key component and that can basically broaden the mission environment and basically allow a larger U UUS to perform a lot more function than perhaps a smaller UUS which by its physical size restriction as we were talking about this in the generalization versus specialization video, it cannot necessarily be as configurable as versatile because it's limited by its size. So what we see with Hearn is a lot of advancements. We see advancements in battery technology, in propulsion technology, in autonomous technology. And this means that its robustness, a lot of it, uh, and what allows it to, to fulfill its function comes from its ability to squeeze a lot into a larger space, but a relatively small space compared with even a few years ago. And this gives it, relatively to a few years ago, significantly more longevity, uh, longer range, really decent speed, it's rather agile, while maintaining the low profile that a U UUS has to, because it's got to be stealthy and lie below the waves. Unlike other UUS, unlike uh, I think Riptide doesn't have this. Hearn has configurable electronic systems, and that's not to say that it's just the type that makes uh, electronic systems compatible with certain configurations of payload, or a configuration that changes, uh, I don't know, sensorability. This is something that basically can entirely change the electronic infrastructure in order to best suit the warfighter's needs, and that's an incredibly good thing, because it means that one can uh, maximize and adapt per the mission parameters, which again makes it even more specific, because it's configurable. And it means it can have a lot of specific purposes, meaning, in effect, uh, 
while each mission has a lot of specialization ability, it is generalist in its overall potential ability. So what this electronic configuration doesn't change, despite the fact it is more configurable than ever, uh, is Hearn's ability to really communicate. That's not something that which changes really at all with differences in configuration architecture. So it has really advanced interconnectedness with naval architecture, with other naval assets, with you know what one might call the mothership, the thing that launched it. Uh, and this provides a really secure uh, communication network and has huge value. So Hearn can give a lot of forward information and generally sort of provide a great deal of utility in measuring its own ability effectiveness without increasing signature much at all, despite its size. Uh, in addition, of course, it builds on the brilliant US electronics work that sort of minimizes energy use through electronic pathway direction, which we saw in Riptide as well. Uh, and that minimizes profile, and that's actually really important. And despite its size, it is far chunkier, it's far larger. Hearn does have a really low profile because that's partially its purpose. So it's constructed from sort of classically stealthy materials, uh, advanced composite materials that UUS will often utilize in creation of exterior shells as well as interior components, meaning it's going to stay off radar and sonar for far, far longer if it appears at all. So, something else in comparison, I also talked about with Riptide, is its ability to operate really, really well, as the US often have to, in low light environments. And what that means is that it can conduct sort of seafloor warfare, uh, it can dive lower, it can stay lower for longer, and it can still navigate. Hearn does this excellently as well, and I think that's a brilliant continuation. So it's got excellent navigation ability. Hearn may be much larger, but it really does have better navigation infrastructure as a result of this increase in size. You've got more component count, you've got superior complexity of the navigation systems involved. One doesn't necessarily have to be so ruthless with what one can add. And, you know, as we've said, uh, if one wants to add certain infrastructure, uh, advanced sonars, that sort of stuff, to add in to give it better navigation, to give it better target acquisition than one can. So its navigation systems and the configurability of those navigation systems are, you know, it's really a new frontier with that sort of configurability for navigation systems, which are usually more in place, more in built, more fixed, uh, and you sort of change up the payload and that's about it. Uh, so we see the navigation systems that are even inherent, they factor in much more and much more precise oceanographic factors, more information communicated to other assets to a better degree, communicated and operated upon by the uh, by Hearn itself to a better degree. And of course, all of this, again, makes it more mission capable, and that's all one really wants. So to just talk about configuration a minute, perhaps more generally, configuration is something I've talked about quite a bit in the past, I'm sure, Pretty much with every single one of these entries, I have said versatility at least three times within each video. And that's because I really like versatility, but Hearn really is versatile in its configurability for the mission environment. So the warfighter can change a lot, and I'm not going to create a full-on list, but I really do think it's worth driving home this point. The warfighter can change platform size, you know, really inherent structural differences. They can remove or add hull sections to change its size. So while it is extra large, one can minimize size, one can maximize size. Uh, it really can change. One can change the launch platform. It can be launched from ships, submarines, uh, harbors or docks of some sort. It can adapt payload space, of course, as you sort of assume, and this will they don't say much about it, of course, because it's secret, but uh, this will be even more configurable than Riptide, not simply uh, flooded bay, bay, larger munitions, uh, dry bay, smaller munitions, a lot more stuff for perhaps more specific purposes and actually, I guess, more heavy duty warfare because Riptide, as potent as it is, uh, isn't absolutely enormous and Hearn basically can improve on that or at least fill 
the hole that Riptide perhaps leaves for larger assets for taking out, uh, I guess, in sort of anti-submarine warfare roles for really uh, doing the final blow. It can fulfill what Riptide sometimes can't. Uh, at the very least, let's say, for the payload, it's adaptable. Uh, and one can change it for depth, for purpose, for profile, uh, and pack the punch that one wants to pack. In addition, you can configure it, which is also sort of synergized with the payload, uh, to add ROVs, range extenders, uh, advanced sonars, a great deal. And again, this is what we've seen before, this is what I've talked about before, is the, you know, the synergizing ability of configuration that in being able to configure these, particularly if you have multiple communicating assets, you're going to be able to create effectively an impenetrable underwater wall. Uh, really impossible to get past defences if you're implementing both Riptide and Turn, and that's really uh, all one needs for underwater warfare, because the fact of the matter is submarines are going to find it particularly tricky to get past this sort of stuff if one has multiple assets in the area. It will be a case pretty much sheer dumb luck at that point. Uh, in any case, there is also uh, the added benefit, effectively, of this configurability in that it can be taken apart easier. And that may seem, you know, an odd thing to say, that makes it sound more flimsy, but the fact of the matter is if parts are designed to be chopped, changed, uh, moved in, moved out with speed, with simplicity, there is easy access to every single component, meaning that maintenance really is quite simple. And that's a huge benefit, and that basically makes it mission-capable faster. It means that the UUS can be repaired at a far faster rate. So not only can it be uh, sort of mission-capable faster, but I guess the degree to which it can be um, repaired after losing mission capability for a short period of time is even shorter and that's incredibly important and basically this means that one can also use less intensive equipment because it's designed to be taken apart to be moved around to be changed and that's important and it can still stay as an integral unit so the question is what use is this what's Hearn going to be used for and it's pretty much similar to most UUS First off, you'll be able to tell by payload configurability, it's designed for anti-submarine warfare, and that's the sort of obvious one. Secondarily, the protection of critical national infrastructure, so we're talking about stuff like uh, maybe naval bases, uh, international interconnectors, pipelines, uh, undersea pipelines, that could come in handy. Um, and then, sort of, the final stated function, of course, is ISR. So that's Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance, and that's what UUS often attempts to, sort of, maximise. But with communication infrastructure, with oceanography equipment, Hearn really improves on this. So I'm going to leave it there. And, of course, this was a bit of a ramble again. But nonetheless, I really do uh, implore you to check out Hearn, because the fact of the matter is, it's an advancement, and... UUS doesn't have to be small uh, and, you know, sort of tiny low signature to be incredibly useful and to be incredibly low profile in itself. So incredibly configurable, incredibly versatile. Yes, I've said it again, maximal synergy. What more could one want? That's heard.